Hey, welcome. My name is Rachel Smith, and this is the Natural Health Rising podcast. I am a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and the owner of Natural Health Rising, which is my online holistic functional medicine company where I help people who have autoimmune diseases, chronic illnesses, mystery symptoms, and a whole host of other imbalances restore their health by natural means. On this podcast, you're going to hear conversations between myself and other health experts on functional medicine and general holistic health. My goal is to provide you with the tools you need in order to help you rise to your healthiest and happiest self. Hey, this is episode 23 of the Natural Health Rising podcast. And today my guest is Max Carr. So Max founded and manages Trilogy Fungi, which is a medicinal mushroom supplement company. And ever since he was young, he wanted to be a part of something that changed the planet for the better, something that would shift humanity towards a more sustainable future. And learning about mushrooms really sparked a passion for him. And Trilogy Fungi is the first chapter of fulfilling his goals. So welcome to the show, Max. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. Me too. Yeah. Haven't dove into medicinal mushrooms on this show yet, so we can go a lot of ways with this. Cool. I think it's, I think it's important for you to have a basis for it, especially for what you do. So, yeah, absolutely. I love medicinal mushrooms, but we've got to share this all with the, with the public. <laughs> cool. Yep. So let's start by having you take us back to just a little bit of your background story of like mm-hmm. when you discovered mushrooms and how that turned into trilogy fungi and what you do today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as far as like, as far as origin stories go, I, I kind of feel like mushrooms found me in a way. Um, you know, I grew up in uh, in Oregon and was in the forest a lot and still had, like, even then had no idea about, you know, the network that was underneath my feet and the critters that were in the trees that were so powerful, but you, most people just don't see them unless you're looking for them. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, just a couple of years ago that, um, things started to shift for me. I met my fiance and she kind of started talking about how some people in the community were um, using psychedelic mushrooms to kind of help ease a couple things. And we could talk about that down the road if you want to, but all of a sudden I thought, "Hmm, I'm going to look into that just to understand it more. Um, And when I opened up the world of mycelium, it fascinated me. Um, And so I started finding out as much as I could, I ordered a ton of books. Um, I told my parents, you know, oh, hey, look, I'm interested in this. And as being someone that, you know, didn't uh, further my education in a traditional sense after high school, my mom was like, I'll buy you all the books you want. So I just like dumped in and, and fully immersed. And when I started realizing how profound and amazing the benefits are from mushrooms, I started thinking, well, why why is this, why is everyone not talking about this? I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I grew up kind of just thinking as I, as I think a lot of people do in the Western culture, you know, as you get old, you get ailments and that's just part of being old and there's nothing you can do about it. And you just hope that, you know, you don't, you don't get as bad of an ailment as the guy next to you. And this kind of learning about, you know, mycology and mushrooms and, and their benefits really shifted my my realization, as well as, you know, the knowledge that my fiance brought to the table for me, we talk a lot about um, health in general, and and the way the body works. And, but it made me realize that it's, you know, it's somewhat within our control. Um, Obviously, not everyone gets dealt an amazing deck of cards for their health. And that's a struggle that a lot of people have to um, overcome, unfortunately, you know, we, we'd hope that um, everyone would be in amazing health. But Um, what I'm hoping to do is provide, you know, one more opportunity for people to kind of try and take that into their own hands. And, um, so it just, it just bloomed, I guess, you know, Mm -hmm. um, from basically from there. And when we decided, when I decided to, uh, do something about it, I started going around and looking at different, um, different, you know, locations where I could purchase mushrooms and things like that. I started at farmer's markets and I started asking really basic questions and I realized that, a lot of people were, even the people growing mushrooms and, and making products were kind of clueless to a lot of the basics. And I thought, this is really 
simple, at least for me. So I, I talked to one of my buddies and said, Hey, what do you think about, you know, making mushroom products? And it started with growing products, but then he was like, well, let's, you know, let's research the market. And we did. And next thing, you know, three years later, we finally launched and we've got, we've got a company providing this awesome medicine to people. So that's kind of how it, you know, transgressed and started with, you know, zero knowledge about mushrooms at all, other than I don't like them on my pizza to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to take them every single morning and all of my family members better take them with me so that we can all live, you know, long, happy, healthy lives together. So that is super cool. I love mm-hmm. that story before I, I really want to like dive into the health benefits and everything, but yeah. first let's kind of start from a basic understanding of maybe like what is fungi and maybe like medicinal versus psychedelic mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And then, um, what's that relationship between fungi and, and us and our species? Yeah, totally. Um, so basically, you know, fungi is a really broad spectrum. It covers, it covers a lot of different organisms that, um, some grow mushrooms and others do not. And so there's a, there's a misunderstanding there. Um, for some people, mycelium is kind of what we would consider the root uh, network that's underneath the soil. And certain species will, um, in order to spread their seed or their um, spores, will actually generate a fruiting body, which is the mushroom. Um, So that's just kind of like a basic. Now, you know, fungus in relationship with people has I mean, there's, it's just so, so broad, Um, you know, there's some cordyceps families that it it covers everything from psychedelic fungus, like ergot, all the way to penicillin, um, morels, which are people's like favorite gourmet, and then, you know, ones that you wouldn't eat, but you can make extractions and get, you know, uh, medicinal benefits out of them. So there's, there's just a huge plethora of of benefits all the way across the board from, you know, different types. And will you expand again on the the second part of your question? Um, Yeah, just going through kind of the basics of, so people understand like, well, what is like medicinal versus psychedelic and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a, it's funny that you bring that up. That's a huge uh, like topic for when I bring this up to people and I say, you know, I, I founded a medicinal mushroom tincture company and their mind immediately goes to psychedelics. And part of the reason is because in the cannabis industry, the minute someone says medicinal, they're like, oh, it's a drug that I can take as a medicine and it's passable as a medicine. So, um, yeah, so I, I do want to touch on like how different the two are, you know, we have, Mm -hmm. we have access to psychedelic mushrooms and they can be very beneficial for people, um, with like spiritual healing and, um, you know, brain retraining and things like that, dealing with depression and, um, and other issues, but it's, um, it is a very different world. So the, the mushrooms that we deal with are gourmet and medicinal. So the reason I separate those two is because, some of the mushrooms that we put in our products are not ones that you would like take off the tree or off a log and just chew on it because it would, it'd be almost impossible and you'd get almost no benefits from it. They don't taste good. Um, so there are some gourmet mushrooms that are used, um, in, in cooking culinary that have amazing medicinal benefits, whether you eat them or you extract the benefits and put them into medicine Mm -hmm. while there are some that, definitely you're not going to eat, you know, um, you can go foraging for them if you know, if you're, you know, well learned in, in that area, but you're going to take them home and make an extract or a powder out of them so that you can ingest, um, the mushroom or, or the benefits from the mushroom. Okay. Yeah. And does this, how does this tie into mycophobia? Like what is, is that for people? So Mycophobia is basically, you know, as most phobias, it's a fear of, of the world of mushrooms. And it's, it's kind of a, a, a goal of ours to try and alleviate mycophobia in Western culture, because for some reason, um, or, well, there's a lot of speculation as to why, and we will go over that, but um, a lot of people are scared of mushrooms. They know, like, if, if, a, if the grocery store didn't put it on, my pizza or the restaurant didn't offer it in the menu, then I'm not going anywhere near it. And part of the reason is because there are a lot of 
poisonous mushrooms out there. Um, some there's actually not quite as many poisonous mushrooms as people think that there are. Um, most mushrooms, even if they're not really edible, aren't going to kill you. But I highly recommend you don't go into the forest and you know harvest without someone who's very educated and can teach you how to identify um, a medicinal or an edible mushroom. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, humans have been using mushrooms for as long as as long as we know, really. I mean, some of the earliest human remains that we found were incorporating uh, mushrooms in their like toolkits and for their clothes and things like that. Um, some mushrooms can be delaminated and turned into leathers, which is something really cool that a lot of people are doing now for sustainable products. Um, they were using, you know, mushrooms to transport fire because you could keep a smolder for a long period of time and that was huge for survival was being able to take fire long distances with you as you or your tribe traveled um and then you know as we get into into a world of humans being a little bit more um advanced we started playing with psychedelic mushrooms and other psychedelic funguses in our beer and our wine and you know, as religion started to explode, a lot of people speculate that, you know, psychedelic uh, substances had a role in that because for a lot of people, it can connect you to, you know, source or, you know, what feels divine and it can offer, you know, mind expanding experiences, which a lot of people associate with being connected to God or the ethers or things like that. So um, I'm sure there was lots of contingencies amongst, you know, uh, organized churches and, and what psychedelics were doing for people. And a lot of people even think that maybe the witch hunts had something to do with um, people like basically tripping on moldy bread and uh, <laughs> seeing things that weren't actually happening and, and just a, a mass hysteria and confusion. And so as, as Western culture um, started to advance and expand, I think that there may have been like a almost a purposeful push for mushrooms or healing medicines in general to be suppressed because um, there were a lot of, you know, healers and shamans and, and medicine people who understood that the forest provides us with everything that we need to be, you know, the best that we can be and healthy and um, be connected and in a spiritual sense and a, a physical grounding sense. And, um, you know, the world around us is getting crazier and crazier. And it seems like um, humans are being pushed in the opposite direction of that. And so I think that that's, um, I think that's probably where a part of mycophobia stems from. Um, most phobias are a lack of knowledge. And so, um, and, you know, obviously a lot of them aren't people aren't scared of things for any particular reason. It's just, it just is what it is. But I think that when it comes to mushrooms, if someone were more educated in the benefits and how they incorporate themselves in our world and our lives and how they're intertwined, it would set people at ease about, you know, using them or understanding the way that they, the way that they connect. I mean, they, mushrooms are literally like the mycelial network is literally running underneath us. Every step that you take, there's hundreds and hundreds of miles of these tubular cell structures, you know, connecting themselves to plants. And some people even think that they, they have a, sent a sentience level that allows them to manipulate the world above ground. So they will literally, you know, help plants um, or decompose certain things or help promote a certain plant from growing so that when it dies, it creates better food for them and ultimately creating a world for themselves that they can that they can flourish in and so if we go all the way back you know much fungus has been we've found fungus that's as that's older than than plant fossils and so we know they've been around forever and it it begs the question you know did they did they truly pave the way for life on earth to be what it is today and you know are we here because of because of fungus. And so that, you know, that really broad understanding might help people be less afraid of mushrooms and realize that while there are some poisonous ones and, you know, psychedelic ones that you might not be interested in, you know, they're, they're awesome and they're fun. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for all that background. Yeah. I, I have heard the theory of how our 
neural networks and our brains grew and how we got, became more conscious and stuff by using psychedelic mushrooms. And I just think yeah. that's, I'm like, that yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, that's a sound ape theory from Terrence McKenna. That's, yep. um, he released a book like back in 91, I think, and, uh, like food or fruit of the gods. And yeah, it's the, the theory that basically primitive humans found psychedelic mushrooms and that helped expand our consciousness to become where we are today. Mm -hmm. And then, um, another thing that I, I thought of while you were talking of the mycophobia is like, it's, it's kind of funny if people are scared of having medicinal mushrooms, when our society is run by pharmaceuticals and things that are really harmful for our bodies, when we have these, these, uh, fungi that are, have been on our planet for forever, basically. And mm -hmm. so I just think that's kind of interesting as with most um, holistic and herbal treatments, right. Or I don't want to say the word treatment. That's, that's not what I mean, but just these modalities that we can kind of use to help us in different areas of our lives. Totally. Um, and one more thing that I thought of is we actually have now candida and yeast. That's not a mushroom, but it's a fungus. And we all have candida lives in our bodies. Yep. Now we don't want it in excess. That's actually like when people have candida overgrowth, that's not good. And I work with people to help get those levels down, but it's always going to be in our bodies and it lives, um, symbiotically with us. Right. And yeah. a lot of times like fungi live symbiotically with all these other things too. So everything yeah. lives symbiotically with us, you know, yeah. our, our bodies are, I don't remember the statistic. It was like 43% human cells. And the rest is like, is you know, bacteria and microorganisms that are, that are coexisting inside of this, you know, suit that we, that our consciousness travels through this 3d world in. And so, you know, one thing that I thought was that I always feel is really cool about mushrooms and what they have to offer and what we can learn from them is they, they really do, you know, on a, on a, fundamental level of how they they grow and how the organism works and also on like a psychedelic level they they tend to push the 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 singularity like the the fact that you are an individual it really uh it really tries individuality in a sense and makes us think about how we are truly connected to everything all the time you know mm -hmm. the, the mycelial network is true is like actually connected to all the plants in its area and it creates guilds with these plants, whether it has to, you know, generate um, a substance to ward off, you know, an enemy or whether it's going to hold hands with the roots of a couple of trees and, and share and spread nutrients. Our, our bodies are guilds as well. You know, we're always trying to balance and, and uh, promote and battle these organisms and our, our gut biome, as you said, is a is like a hub for that. That's where a lot of that action happens. It's like, it's like the battlefield, you know, mm -hmm. uh, inside of our bodies. And um, one of the medicinal benefits that mushrooms can offer for things like candida, like you mentioned, a lot of people think that you can't fight a fungus with another fungus, but it's actually um, not true at all. Turkey tail, for example, grows on pine trees. And so we, uh, ancient Dallas, saw that and they thought wait a minute pine trees are you know super acidic and almost no parasitic or saprophytic you know species will grow on a pine tree but they thought well if, if this mushroom can then it must have amazing medicinal powers and so they started harvesting it and realized the benefits and um one of the things that uh one of the things that they they use it for is to help get is use it as an antifungal it's antiviral antibacterial antifungal um so i know i've read a couple stories of people who have been able to completely regulate their candida in their gut with um turkey tail and other medicinal mushrooms okay yeah. turkey, turkey tail does something else really powerful doesn't it which one um, is known for being like anti-cancerous yes is it so yeah so okay Turkey tail has uh, some really awesome polysaccharides in it. And I'll, I'll backstep for a second. So most of the beneficial compounds in mushrooms are the polysaccharides or beta-glucons, which a beta-glucon is a polysaccharide. 
and um, triterpenes and then other you know, minerals and vitamins and things like that. Some of them are water soluble and some of them are uh, alcohol soluble. So uh, we do a dual extraction to try and encompass like the whole, the full spectrum of the, the compounds in the mushrooms. But nice. one of the, one of the you know, most studied and most beneficial compounds in all medicinal mushrooms are their polysaccharides or their beta glucans. So um, there's a polysaccharide peptide and a polysaccharide crestin in turkey tail. They're shortened to PSP and PSK, and they're pretty widely studied. Um, China has done more studies than anybody because they've been, you know, utilizing mushrooms for a very, very long time. They are definitely exempt from the Western culture, you know, uh, mycophobia. But uh, the PSP and PSK are known for being super, super beneficial um, for reversing cancer alongside other treatments for cancer. And, you know, as a lot of your followers may have listened to or, or people in general, um, and if they haven't, they should, there's an awesome TED talk from uh, Paul Stamets, who's like a leading mycologist in, in the United States. And he, he brings his mom out who survived like stage four breast cancer uh, high dosing turkey tail alongside her, uh, you know, radiation and other chemo treatments. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely a place and a time for Western medicine. And our goal is not to tell people that they can cure everything with a plant or a fungus, you know, but, um, but alongside, you know, you're, you're definitely missing a huge mark if you're not, you're not giving yourself a fair chance if you're not at least considering holistic options alongside Western options. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love Paul Stamets and I was going to say too, in his movie, fantastic fungi, have you Mm -hmm. seen, I'm sure you've seen that. (laughs) I think he, does he talk about his mom in that video in that movie too? I don't remember. They, they bleed together so much for me. I've watched, you know, I've watched everything he's got online along with a lot of other people. So yeah, but Um, okay. He also has like a really phenomenal Joe Rogan episode. I think he does part one and part two. And honestly, that video was one of the first informational videos I watched when I started learning about mushrooms. And he definitely paved the way for me, along with a couple other really, really awesome people who wrote some great books. And I'll, you know, plug those at the end for sure. Awesome. Yep. I, I totally agree. I think I listened to that episode a couple times <laughs> the yeah, show rogan one family members and you're like check out check out how cool this is yeah yeah my mind was blown so yeah everybody can go check out those things um okay do you want to talk about other mushrooms like maybe maybe some of the top ones top benefits yeah. way, ways people are using them for sure um there's there's quite a few um you know back to paul stamets he spent a lot of time uh, synthesizing and separating the compounds in tons of mushrooms, ones that aren't even popular and mainstream at all, but have like amazing, amazing benefits. But, um, you know, for people just getting started so that it's not super overwhelming, we can boil them down to just a couple. Um, there's probably 10 really phenomenal ones that I think everyone should probably incorporate in their diets um, or in their morning routines or, or things like that. Um, as like preventative, preventative maintenance. Um, right now we use eight different mushrooms in our product. Uh, part of the reason is because I wanted to, I wanted to build tincture blends that would provide kind of groupings of benefits for people so that they, they know, you know, if I take this, <clears throat> all the, all three or four mushrooms in this tincture are going to provide me with relatively similar benefits. Um, And, you know, while a lot of them have their amazing, you know, showstopper benefit, most of these mushrooms have benefits that bleed across each other. So just because I put, um, you know, a certain mushroom in my uh, immunity tincture for your immune system doesn't mean that the, that the mushrooms in my concentration and energy tincture don't also provide a lot of similar effects. You know, it's just that they're showstopper benefits are are categorized in that way um so some of the the top ones are reishi and chaga those are considered like the king and queen of of mushrooms uh, chaga in 
uh, Norwegian, I think. Yeah, literally translates to cancer mushroom. And it's, it's got, it's, it's literally contains more antioxidants than any other thing that humans eat on the planet, which is incredible. A dual extraction chaga mushroom gives you more antioxidants than literally anything else. Um, and so that's, that's phenomenal. I'm sure you're familiar with antioxidants, you know, fighting off free radicals in the body and reducing inflammation and all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, so they, you know, a lot of cultures say that the chaga mushroom is just kind of good for whatever ails you, honestly, um, having like a foundational, uh, having good, a good foundational health will basically ail most things, you know? Um, and then we've got, you know, cordyceps, which I guess I could start by just going through um, the different blends that we have in our products and that yeah. would kind of group them all together. Perfect. So we, have, we have a lion's mind product, which is comprised of lion's mane, uh, cordyceps and reishi. And so cordyceps are known for generating a lot of energy and stamina within the body. Uh, it actually promotes ATP it, on a cellular level for the body. So people, for people who don't know, ATP is literally like the, the energy that your cells use. It, it's, it's like what charges our batteries basically inside of our body. And so by, you know, stimulating ATP, uh, abundance in the body, we have more energy, we're more stamina, we can perform physically a lot better. It also boosts testosterone and uh, increases blood circulation. So it's really good for um, like ED or uh, even increasing your libido, which is kind of fun. They, a lot of people call it cortisexy, sexy, uh, which is, <laughs> um, I have not heard that one yet. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, and that's all due to the cordycepic acid that's in it and you'll find that like a lot of these mushrooms get their names from the the compounds that are in them um lion's mane the other the other one i mentioned is good for promoting nerve growth factor in the in the brain actually so you know as we age if your um endocrine system is not properly balanced and you you start you know degrading your your body stops generating as much uh nerve growth factor and it can have it can have effects on like your brain um that will manifest as alzheimer's or dementia and things like that what's awesome about um lion's mane is that heresinones and arenacines are the two the two compounds that work together one promotes nerve growth factor and the other one allows it to pass through the blood brain barrier which means you can get um, NGF directly to your brain. So we've got customers who, you know, they're like, well, my, my dad, you know, was basically like, couldn't talk anymore because he was not there. And now he's speaking complete sentences. Um, and so it's really awesome for, uh, promoting neurogenesis and regrowing nerve damage and things like that. Um, one thing to keep in mind about it though, when high dosing it is, for people who are in unique situations where let's say maybe you got in a car accident and you have like a pinched nerve mm -hmm. and that's causing nerve damage, but you can't feel that because it's been pinched. If you start high dosing lion's main mushroom, um, it can actually start healing that nerve. And if it's still pinched, you can, it can actually, you'll start feeling it because the nerve is now functioning. And so it's highly recommended that if you're taking it for, for nerve damage to, you know, do it with, um, with help from your doctor and, and let them know that that's what you're doing. And if you feel pain, definitely stop. Um, because it's not gonna, it's not gonna unpinch your nerve. You know what I mean? Mm, um, okay. So that, that, um, uh, tincture is basically geared towards giving you a lot of focus, um, better memory as well as, uh, stamina and performance. So we have a lot of athlete friends who use it, um, and promote the product. Um, I, I have a fun story. I hadn't really ever high dosed, uh, cordyceps before. And my brother-in-law owns, a like a ninja training gym down in Phoenix. And I went for the first time and with like, no, 
no training or experience whatsoever. And I took uh, high dose cordyceps right before and like I was blown away at my ability to, you know, traverse the course. And everyone was like, you sure you've never done this before? You're moving. Like <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's cool. And, and a lot of Olympic athletes have used it to beat records and things like that without using, you know, uh, steroids and things like that. So can you break down what is, what is high dose maybe with like, uh, you mentioned lion's mane and, uh, cordyceps and high dose in general, and then also maybe like in your tinctures, what that would be, if you can share that. Yeah. So, uh, right now, because our tinctures, we, we, because we utilize a dual extraction method, our tinctures are 30% alcohol. And so for some people, they're not ideal for really high dosing. Um, in the future, we will be drying out our tinctures and turning them into a powder that people can dissolve into food or liquid. And that will allow you to high dose the product without, um, without having to like take a shot of 30% alcohol in the morning, basically. Mm. Um, but a lot of people, so some books that I've read say that a lot of people who have, you know, minor ailments, like, um, uh, like allergies and, and, uh, or candida overgrowth or things like that, um, can take like, you know, two to 5,000 milligrams a day of a particular mushroom. Uh, and again, I would, I would highly recommend that you do that alongside your, you know, your practitioner or your doctor, um, mm -hmm. so that you can make sure that if you, if you do have some sort of side effect, um, that it can be managed most people are not going to have side effects from mushrooms. And that's one of the amazing uh, pluses about this as a medicine is that, you know, if you're using it as an alternative to a pharmaceutical, you're, you're getting rid of that pharmaceutical downside of, of side effects. And I mean, we all know very well about those, um, mm -hmm. the, the long list at the end of every commercial. <laughs> yeah. But Okay, cool. So that's, how, that's how I would, um, that's, that's a, an amount that I would be comfortable telling people to high dose. Um, I would say that right now with the tinctures being, uh, an alcohol level that they are, um, uh, it's more of a, like a morning maintenance to help prevent, uh, ailments down the road. Mm -hmm. But I definitely have seen people, even from the amount that we recommend on the bottle daily, having to reverse their, uh, their meds for certain things. Like my grandmother had to go to the doctor and basically change her blood pressure medication because fountain of youth was regulating her blood pressure so well that she didn't need as high dose of her medication. So again, definitely under the, under the, you know, guide guidance of a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah. we have the Turkey tail, we've got the Rishi, the Chaga, the lion's mane, um, any, any important things you just kind of mentioned the, this fountain of youth, what is in that one? Yeah. So that's, uh, the second of our three fountain of youth is geared towards, uh, you know, externally your hair, skin, and your nails. Um, and then also internally stabilizing, you know, your gut, your liver, helping clear out your liver, things like that stuff that, that makes you feel good. So that when you feel good, you look good. You know, mm -hmm. the idea is, is to keep you young in, in all facets. So internally and externally. Um, chaga is an amazing one for melanin production in the body, which helps with your hair and your nails um, and oxidative stress on your skin cells. So you can almost take chaga as like an internal sunblock. Um, the fountain of youth tincture will actually promote healthier new cells as your old ones slough off. So, um, taking these long term, especially when you're young and, and being on top of it, uh, will, will show, you know, amazing benefits over time as your cells regenerate and you grow new ones and you're replacing cells and things like that. You'll notice that overall the new ones are healthier, happier, uh, better functioning. And, you know, that being said, it's never too late to start. You can always mm -hmm. increase your health by uh, incorporating these things into your, into your daily routine. Okay. That's amazing. Did we miss any of the tinctures? Um, yeah, we've got one more. Okay. So uh, the immune shield is um, probably my favorite. It's It's got chaga, um, maitake, and turkey tail. So it's got that PSP, the PSK. Um, and 
my talk is known for having SX fraction, which is really good for taking care of uh, syndrome X, which I don't know if you've ever heard of it or if the viewers have heard of it, but it's basically the doctor's way of describing like a, a plethora of um, side effects that a lot of people in America have, uh, including, you know, obesity, cholesterol problems, uh, blood sugar problems, blood pressure problems. Um, it basically regulates all of that. So all of the mushrooms in that, in the immune shield tincture are immune modulating, meaning that they're going to increase your immune function to do what it does best. Um, I try to remind people that you're not really you're not really taking the compounds from the mushroom and then that's directly benefiting your body and just like, you know, getting the engine running better. What it's doing is it's giving your body all of the, the compounds that it needs to do what it already does so well. You know, we're these amazing creatures that are designed to literally heal ourselves. I mean, when you get a cut, we're like superhuman. We literally heal our wounds overnight, you know? And so um, by giving your body all these complex sugar change, ch chains, these polysaccharides, you're giving your immune system everything that it needs to start ramping up and, and creating, you know, white and T cells and, and things like that so that we can fight, we can better regulate that, that uh, gilding or, or war that we were talking about between our, you know, 42% human cells and then the rest of the stuff that makes us up, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's more of a foundational thing. You know, it's, it's slowly providing your body with everything that it needs to do what it does best. And some people were, were blessed with, um, you know, better health than others, unfortunately. And so um, they, they will work better for some people than other people. And, you know, some people don't need them as much, but they'll help regulate, you know, your hormones and, and your cell cell regrowth and things like that, which, which are foundational. I mean, as a, as a health practitioner or holistic practitioner, I'm sure you're constantly focused on the root cause of, of people's ailments. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can, you know, slap a bandaid on all these uh, symptoms that people have, but unless you really provide the body with what it needs to, to just function properly on a really basic level, we're missing the mark. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what else makes your guys' products different from other companies' products? Um, you know, aside from, aside from kind of the, the ultimate goal of connecting with the health community and really wanting to be supportive of everyone on this mission of, of providing plant medicine for people, um, and, and functional holistic medicine. Uh, one thing that's great is that we, we utilize uh, fruiting bodies as opposed to mycelium. And so it's a, it's a really controversial topic in the mushroom world right now. And I've read a lot of, um, a lot of back and forth information, but we decided that we were gonna utilize the fruiting body of the mushroom because that is guaranteed to provide, you know, a potent um, availability of the benefits from these, from these organisms. And that's been proven for the longest amount of time. You know, mm. we, the, the use of mycelium is fairly new um, and the fruiting bodies have been proven, you know, with traditional Chinese medicine and lots of other cultures to be incredibly beneficial forever. So we stuck with a route that we knew was going to provide benefits for our, our consumers. Um, another really important thing is sourcing for your mushrooms. So when we first started thinking about making a, a, a product, uh, we wanted to grow our own mushrooms. I mean, that would be the most ideal, it'd be the, the most fun and uh, we could guarantee the quality but we realized really quick that the overhead for that and the investments um, are pretty high. So we decided we'll start by sourcing really quality mushrooms. So we, we found an organic uh, grower out of Minnesota, Forest Mushrooms, and they provide us with all of our organic mushrooms, um, except for chaga, which we get uh, wild harvested. 
chaga is a mushroom that you can't really cultivate um, in, well, it's, it's technically not a mushroom. Um, the chaga mushroom actually hides behind the bark and what we collect is more of like a, a mushroom growth. But regardless, um, we get it wild harvested and that ensures that it's growing on, on you know, the right kind of wood so that it, it gets the compounds it needs to generate its beneficial compounds like betulinic acid and things like that. Um, but one thing that's really important as far as mushroom cultivation goes is what the substrate is that the mushroom is grown on. So when you're growing these organisms, you start by, um, you know, growing just the mycelium itself and then fruiting the mushroom body off the mycelium. And a lot of people will use uh, grain or, um, you know, agricultural waste and things like that to grow these, uh, the mycelium on. And while that's all great and you can get amazing fruits, the problem is that in the wild, that mushroom is supposed to grow on, let's say a hardwood or a pine tree. And so if you're not providing it with the, the base nutrients that it turns into its beneficial nutrients, then you're missing the mark. Um, and then that also leads to an issue where if the, if the product is not grown on uh, like a wood substrate, then now it's available for, for consumption because if it's grown on grain, then you can sell the mycelium as a, as a beneficial product. And um, you're really getting mycelium mixed with grain. And mm -hmm. so there's this real big issue with people basically, you know, I mean, there's, if you're, if you're using um, like mushroom farming waste, which is the old substrate filled with mycelium, and you're turning that into a product, there's no way to separate the mycelium from that grain substrate. Now there's ways that I've come up with to isolate mycelium growth and have pure mycelium. And you could probably add that into a product and get some, some alternate benefits that the fruiting body didn't provide. Um, but the main thing is that when you get third-party testing for polysaccharides, those are sugar, complex sugar chains and grains and starch are made up of polysaccharides as well. So if you, if you have a mycelium product grown on a grain base and then you grind that up into a powder and you capsulate it or you turn it into a tincture or whatever, a coffee, and then you go get that third party tested, you're gonna read really high in polysaccharides, which is like, yay, but what kind of polysaccharides? And are they gonna benefit the body at all? You know, because you're not, you're usually not testing for an isolated polysaccharide like Crestin or peptide or things like that. You're just trying to get a base a base reading of, of your level of polysaccharides. So we decided that in, in light of people who might have dietary needs and things like that, we would skip the grain and we would go just fruiting body, basically ensuring that, you know, you're not getting any weird stuff and no fillers and things like that. So um, that's, that's one thing that's unique about our, our product. Down the line, if we can isolate mycelium, because of some of its alternate benefits to the fruiting body, we might incorporate it into the product and then it would be, you know, an even more elite product. But right now we're very happy with the benefits we get and the, the reviews we get from our customers. We know that it's working. So mm -hmm. if it's not broken, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for breaking that down. I've actually struggled with that as well. When I've looked at mushroom products, like, Oh, which one do I buy this fruiting body? This mycelium. I don't, I don't know. I've done a little bit of research, but definitely not as much as you, of course. And that's good for me and my clients because I don't eat yeah. grains and my clients don't eat grains normally. Right. <laughs> so I don't know, like with, uh, you know, with glyphosate and all these things, who knows where those grains are coming from. And it's just this big cycle of like really trying to get pure medicine, you know? Yeah. Wow. So that's a big one. If you're, if you're a no grain uh, person, then definitely go looking for products that are only fruiting body. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And disclose that on the, I think people don't ever really read, you know, where are things coming from? What are the amounts and the grams and the micrograms mm -hmm. and all these things, they just see a product and they're like, oh, wow, it says it's good for my brain. Let me take it. It says it's yeah. good for my immune system. Let me take it. But there's so much more that goes into production, dosing for what it's going to do for you and how it's extracted and all these things. So yeah. very, very, very cool. 
Yeah. And mushrooms are having like a moment right now. So a lot of, you know, opportunists are slapping, you know, mushrooms together into products and hoping that people, like you said, will just see it in the store and go, Oh, I read that mushrooms are good for me. And I'll grab that off the shelf. And next thing they know, they've got, you know, candida overgrowth from too much <laughs> grain or something, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, you're not really helping anything. So yeah, being, being wary is important. Yeah. I could go on a whole rant about it's essentially, I don't know if it's still considered greenwashing in that instance, but like greenwashing and you know what that is in no, can food. You explain that to me? Yeah. So in the health industry, um, you know, let's say it's a, a cleaner for your house. It'll be like non-toxic cleaner, or, um, it'll say organic cleaner or something on it where it's like, okay, what is, why does it matter if my cleaner is organic? Is it actually non-toxic or, or so on and so forth? And when you turn it over, you actually read what's in it and it turns out, oh, well, there aren't really great things in here, but they put some things on the label in the front that make it seem appealing to someone who's looking for something natural. However, they cut costs by continuing to use something that's bad for you. Gotcha. Um, another example that I tell all my clients about, I tell people, if you want to use an alternative sweetener, monk fruit is really great. Doesn't alter your blood sugar. Um, it actually has some health benefits to it. But if you go to almost every grocery store that sells monk fruit, I guarantee you that if you flip over the package and look at the back, it's blended with erythritol and it'll say monk fruit on the front. It says nothing about erythritol. Erythritol is a corn-based product that irritates a lot of people's guts. It's, it's, it's a grain. Yeah, um, it's and like, so, it's nice. yeah, it's basically. right. So you have to really look, oh, is this really a hundred percent monk fruit or did they greenwash me and tell exactly. me it was monk fruit and it's healthy. And then I look at the back and it's blended with all these other things. Right. So I that's heard that term before, but I'm very familiar with, you know, the way marketing gets people to, to believe that they're helping this green movement when, when there's really so much behind the scenes. <sighs> yeah, it is crazy. And he who spends the most on marketing wins and that's, it's <laughs> the way it goes right now. So Oh, yeah, unfortunately. But awareness is important, which is why I'm so grateful you're doing this podcast. It's awesome. Thank you. And we're actually coming to a close here. We're running out of time. So I always like to ask if you could leave our listeners with one tip for them to live a healthier, happier life, maybe something that they can implement pretty soon or this week. Um, what would that be? Well, I mean, there's the obvious, I would highly recommend incorporating mushrooms into your life. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's, you know, having a mushroom leather shirt because it's more sustainable fabric or um, promoting businesses that use mycelium packaging or buying a grow kit so that you have sustainable food that you grew at home or, you know, the, the latter, like, you know, getting a tincture um, mm -hmm. so that you can incorporate it into your daily diet. Uh, but I think just being open to the the concept of of mushrooms and their incorporation into society and how how intertwined and how important that is for really becoming a more sustainable culture, you know, having a an understanding of of your neighbor and and letting go of that individuality for a moment to go, hey, we're we're all connected and we all live here and we all need to take care of this place and. Um, you know, being open to as, as mushrooms continue to flourish and have their moment, being open to the things you see and read and, and realize that it's a, it's a good movement and it's, you know, it can help us in a lot of ways. I think, um, I think that's what I'd love to love to promote as far as mushrooms go. You know, the, the whole purpose behind our company trilogy fungi is to, you know, integrate ourselves into the, the biohacking and health community so that we can, lift everybody up like we're not we're not here to be competitive with people we want to we want to provide quality products to go alongside everyone else's quality products so that people can be healthy and happy and live a long time and um and in turn you know for happy healthier people we're gonna we're gonna generate a happier healthier place for the people that come after us so that's the main that's the main goal mm, i love that well, let the listeners know where they can find more info on Trilogy Fungi or what, if you have any final things you want to share with everybody. Yeah. So um, we're big on Instagram right now. 
um, and Facebook. You can find us at Trilogy Fungi or TF Mushrooms is a, a handle we use often. Um, you can also go to our website, trilogyfungi.com. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me personally. Uh, my email is max at trilogyfungi.com or you can reach out to support at trilogyfungi.com. Excuse me. Um, and, you know, look for us in, in your local stores. We're hoping to, we just opened up for wholesale. So we're hoping to be in your chiropractor's office and at your local farmer's market and your health food store and things like that. So um, yeah, keep an eye out. We'll hopefully be everywhere soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching the episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did make sure that you like the video and leave a comment and share it with a friend who really needs to hear it. Because when you share this information, you're also going to help other people level up their health. And if you or somebody else, you know, wants to work on their health and they're looking for a functional medicine practitioner, feel free to reach out to me to apply to work together. Thanks for watching and keep striving to become your healthiest, happiest self.